Well, the time-honoured Fairfield Golden Easter Egg was conducted at Clubman Angle tonight, and I'm very pleased to say joining me now is Colin Watts, the legendary Colin Watts, along with his son Graham, of course. Colin Watts, one of the founders of the Fairfield Club and a very proud man, and no doubt he's got some very interesting stories to tell. Well, Colin Watts, it's great to see you here at Club Menangle once again for the running of the Fairfield Golden Easter Egg, and you must be a very proud man that the tradition lives on. My word, Michael, it started in 1965, and tonight was the 47th year that it was run, and uh, we were very pleased when they, after they closed Fairfield, that Menangle, Club Menangle, which is the trotting club, New South Wales Trotting Club offered to retain the interest in the Golden East Rig. Colin, as you said, 1965, the first running smart fancy for the great WF Wilkins. You must have had some great battles with him over the years. Uh, yes, we, and uh, he was a great friend as well. Uh, the competition was good when the barrier went, but uh, we were great friends, Billy and I, and uh, same as with a lot of those drivers there that are listed. There's uh, fellas like Brian Hancock, I think he won five, and the Fitzpatrick family, I think, have won, they've won seven of them. And, uh, but other, other uh, trainer drivers that were famous was Kevin Newman and Laurie Moles and you name it, they're there. <laughs> that was one of the questions I was going to ask you, Colin. You must be very proud, and the Fairfield Club must have been very proud, the great names that appear, in, including Brian Gath. So it just it must have meant a great deal of them to compete in this race. It, it did. It was at a, They came out of the woodwork uh, at the time because it was the, the feature race of the year besides the New South Wales Oaks, and there were no other... Uh, famous races and uh, we uh, uh, the wife and I were washing up one night and the race was we'd been programmed we didn't have a name for it and I said to Shirley what about if we call it the golden east the easter egg and Pat McCabe was our PR man and he said no we'll call it the golden easter egg and uh, that's how it got started 1971, Stormy Helen, 1981, Gloomy Lass, both trained and driven by the great Colin Watts. <laughs> I really enjoyed those two wins, really enjoyed those two wins. It was a very really proud moment when uh, I was able to win on both horses because we had a big interest in their training from the time they were yearlings and the development of those two mares and they later on produced a uh, very good stock. Both mares produced really, really good uh, yeah. Colin, apart from the Fairfield Golden Easter Egg, also we honour the JD Watts Memorial here at Club Angle now, which is also a, a race that you're very proud the tradition continues. My word, uh, my word, Michael, means a lot to our family, the JD Watts race. And it's been going for a long time too, just after my dad died in 1975. And we ran the first one in 1976. So it's been going ever since. And when Menangle offered to continue the tradition, it was a proud moment for all of us. It was certainly also a very proud moment for your son, which is with us today. And we'll just get Graham Watts to slide into the photo now. Graham, what a wonderful family tradition set about by the great J.D. Watson. Of course, being here with your father tonight must be very special. Oh, it's been a proud, proud moment. Uh, my grandfather's achievements growing up and, and dad's achievements in um, many as, uh, facets of the industry. So something we've all been proud of as a family. And I know uh, actually the J.D. Watson first running was uh, won by a horse called John Oliver. It was driven by Purse Hall. Was a great friend of my grandfather's, and similar colours, red and purple, and owned by Bob Ingham, who was a great loyal uh, client of my grandfather's for, for many years. So um, that that was the start of the JD Watts uh, the race, and and every year it's, it's been won by not only a good horse but generally a good driver too. So. Well, not only good to see members of the Watts family here tonight celebrating and honouring the Golden Easter Egg and the, and the Watts name, but also other people from Fairfield, including Ross Scherf. 
Yeah. Well, Ross, uh, uh, Ross is here tonight, and he's um, uh, he's, he was a great uh, great benefit to our club. Uh, a lot of things wouldn't have got done without Ross. Uh, he saw things from a, a different angle to to us horsemen, and uh, so a lot of credit that uh, a lot of credit for Fairfield to to keep going in the days when things were a little bit tough were. Uh, could be attributed to Ross. You know, he brought in different ways of programming, uh, different time slots. He was probably one of the first to, to run at a, an odd minute to run off the back of gallopers and things like that. He was always thinking along the punter lines because he was a punter himself. So <laughs> still is. So <laughs> he's here tonight, punting. Brian, what was the most valuable lesson you, you ever learnt from your famous father? I think. Uh, The best lesson I, I learned, I would think, was uh, to look after your horse, but I think very much along the lines of thinking of the horse and the safety aspects that go with, with all that. Um, he taught me all the horsemanship things, which I think uh, I, see, I see lacking today in some areas, you know. So he was very quick to point out the safety aspects of, of horsemanship and, and what to be, I guess, uh, ahead of your horse, you know. And um, they, they were installed to, to all of us that, um, from an early age, you know. And I think that's probably half the battle if we started so young and you learn those things along the way. So, but. Colin, just to wrap up, all those great names you competed against, who was your most toughest and respected opponent? <laughs> you got me there, Michael. <laughs> You've got me there. I had a great... Uh, uh, admiration for Les Chant as a driver and a horseman, a great admiration for Johnny Binskin, and uh, uh, they were all friends of mine, but uh, and to pick out the best ones, but the, those two were always in my mind. Graham, just to wrap up with you, a final question. As a young fella, of course, you've got a famous grandfather, a famous father. Your first time you walked into the driver's room to compete and there were all the great names, was it daunting? Uh, it was a proud moment, I remember that. Uh, but, well, particularly Harold Park, to walk into uh, Harold Park and the lockers were there and it was Kevin Newman and Vic Frost and, and all them sort of guys and uh, our locker was 29, which still is today. So that's always meant something. And I don't use it much today, but I'll tell everyone I've locked it. And I've got the key in my colour bag. So that was something, or, um, it just meant something. You know, it was a proud moment to walk up the steps of Harold Park and uh, into, the, into the driver's room. Yeah, so some great banter. But uh, just to sit there, I used to be in awe of all them drivers, you know. Well, Graham, it's certainly been a very proud moment for me, as it always is, to see you, Colin, and uh, continued good health, and I hope we will see you back here at Club and Angle very, very shortly. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much for being here. And Graham, always good to see you too, sir. Thank you, Michael.